Brunt, just want to check in on uh, Yankel. Uh, not to, you know, have to have that be the, the thing we talk about every time, but just how did it feel coming off of that game and uh, all those minutes and a couple of days later here? Oh, I'm good. Uh, ready to go on Sunday. All right, uh, LeBron, what, uh, what, uh, what is you think the most important thing in this matchup? Uh, you know Chris's game pretty well. Obviously, uh, you didn't face them a couple times, especially the last time when AD went off. What's at the top of that scouting report when you break down the film on this Phoenix Sun squad? Uh, first is just the respect factor. Um, they're the number two team in the league for a reason. Uh, 151 games, and uh, and there's a reason because of that. It's because they they've uh, surrounded CP and Book with a, with a supporting cast um, that's been playing at a high level all year. Um, you know, and they got a, a good, a great big three and uh, CP, Book, and Aiden, and the rest of those guys just they're starring their role, and uh, we got to be able to understand that and uh, and match that. So. We're looking forward to the challenge. Hey, LeBron, sometimes you see um, like former players get together on like a round table, guys that were, were friends when they were playing, and, and maybe one guy has rings or accolades, and the other guy didn't get him in his career, and there's kind of some ribbing that goes on. What's the dynamic like with, with you and Chris? Obviously, the respect factor, we all see it and know it. Uh, do you ever, you know, poke him or rib him about the fact that, that you, know, you have the rings and he hasn't earned one in his career? Nah, I think you know me by now. Um, you know, I think that's, that's not in my trait. Um, you know, I don't, I don't really talk about my accolades or what I've been able to do. Um, you know, and our friendship is beyond that. So I don't, I, I'm not one of those guys to, to talk about what I have. I think that's um, it's very shallow and it's beneath me personally. So. I don't get involved in that. Well, kind of a two-parter here, LeBron. Have you and Chris, I would assume, uh, been talking a little bit over the last couple of days since you guys earned the seventh seed? And uh, is there anything you could share from those exchanges now that you guys are finally going to have a playoff series? And then two, what's what's this chess match going to be like between the two of you? And how, uh, how fun will it be for you to try to outwit him? And I know it's a whole team, but to try to go head-to-head -head and mind-to-mind -mind with him over potentially seven games? Well, it's going to be um, comparable to playing against Rondo in the series, playing against Draymond in the series. Um, you know, you have those um, out-of-this-world IQ-type guys and, and fierce competitors, you know, at the same time. So um, it's, just the same, it's the same thing. You know, every time I faced Rondo, um, you know, in the past, um, I knew I had to be – not only my A game as far as my, my game, but also my mind as well. And it's the same with Draymond um, every time you go against those Warriors teams. So, um, you know, I've had experiences with those two guys. So that, that would definitely help me, you know, in, in matching up with CP um, because I know uh, the competitor and I know the IQ uh, of a basketball player he is. Oh. Hey, LeBron, I know you've talked about how your availability to this team in the postseason is a huge factor uh, for, for the team's success. I was wondering if that value affected the way that, that you thought about um, the COVID-19 vaccine and, and being available, uh, not being in protocols. No, nah, no. Nah. Um, anything I do off the floor is uh, you know, predicated to my family, you know, uh, for the majority. I mean, for 99.9% .9 of that. So, you know, it's about the health and safety of my family. Um, and that's what it came down to. Uh, me being available to my teammates uh, on the floor is me taking care of my body. Um, you know, uh, me, um, you know, doing everything I can do to make sure I'm available both mentally, physically, and spiritually as well. So, um, but anything of that, of that nature, you know, that's, what, that's all family talk. And, and do you mind me asking if that, if you're confirming that you did get the vaccine? Uh, it's not, it's not a big deal. Uh, <laughs> BT? What's up, Brian? What's going on, BT? Everything's good, man. Yeah. Consider you've uh, missed some games this season. Where is your game right now compared to past season going into the playoffs? Um. Well, obviously, I had a lot more time to uh, rev up and build my body over the course of the season in the past. and. Um, you know, with the six and a half, seven weeks or whatever it was that I had to sit out and get an opportunity to kind of rev up um, and sharpen, sharpen my sword. But I was able to, to mentally, you know, uh, I guess uh, disconnect as much as I could. Um, obviously for me, it's very stressful watching our games, knowing 
um, how much I can help the ball club and not actually being out there. So as far as like uh, mental uh, break, I didn't get much of that because uh, I just wanted to be available to my guys and I couldn't. But um, I mean, I, I, I'm ready. Um, I'm prepared mentally. My game will continue to improve as the games go on. Um, and hopefully we can play more than four games, you know, and that, you know, and that, that will, you know, get my game going more and more and more. So um, looking forward to seeing what, what's in store for me. We'll take a few more. Yovan. Hello, Brad. Um, AD was talking about how unique of a challenge Phoenix is because your pick and roll coverages are kind of designed to force teams into the mid-range, but they're the, bit, the best mid-range team in the league with, with Book and CP. Um, how do you view that challenge of, of kind of the, the chess match of what you want to take away and them actually being good at what your kind of base defense is designed to force? Yeah, I mean, not, they're not good. They're great. Um, they're the number one mid-range team um, in the league, and it's because CP and, and Book are the number one and two mid-range players in our league. Um, so, you know, we, un <clears throat> we understand that. And, uh, you know, the playoffs is all about, you know, chess moves and, and, and it's going to be a chess match back and forth and um, you know we see who makes the best moves. Alan Sliwa. Hey LeBron, I just want to get your thoughts. For all your playoff experience that you had, is there, of course every game is very valuable, but is there something about game ones? Do game ones kind of set a tone to a series? Do you, do you look at a game one a little bit different? Um, Game one has always been like a learning experience for me. Um, it's kind of set the table to, to know what to expect, um, to know, um, you know, what to look for uh, for the rest of the series. And obviously there's going to be adjustments, uh, coaches and players and everyone makes adjustments, but it kind of sets the table. Um, and for me, it's kind of a fill out game for me personally, um, you know, but for our team, it's not a fill out game. We want to come in and, and play, um, you know, how we did in the second half of this last game um, against the Warriors. Uh, we don't want to have a fill-out game, but for me, um, it's it's kind of a it's a, it's a mental thing for me um, of how, how I'm breaking down the team, breaking down the personnel, um, you know, and then getting on the floor in that game one, and how I can uh, be better in game two. Last question, Melissa Rowland. Hey, LeBron, with all the incredible and sustained success that you've had for two decades, how often do you think back to like when you were in high school and dreaming of getting to where you are now and the guys that really influenced you back in those days, like Coach Dan brought and guys like that? I think about them every day. Um, you know, when I'm, when I'm thinking about basketball, it's not a time to go by when Frank Walker and Coach Drew Joyce and Keith Dan brought doesn't come to mind. They basically gave me the whole DNA and the blueprint of how to, how to play the game of basketball, both as an individual, how to work hard, uh, how to be selfless, um, you know, how there's no I in team. And, um, and without the greater of all of us, then, you know, you will not, you know, get the reward that you're actually looking for at the end of the, at the end of the role. So, you know, they're like my big three when it comes to basketball. You know, Frank Walker, Coach Drew Joyce, and, and Keith Danbrod, they just, they gave me all the tools uh, for when I started playing at nine all the way uh, till I was 18, um, you know, playing in, uh, little leagues to middle school league to AAU ball to high school ball, um, travel leagues and things of that nature. So um, I wouldn't be the player who I am. I wouldn't be succeeding um, with, you know, the way I have at the best league in the world, the NBA, 